It's wonderful that we're all here together. Shabbat Shalom. We're going to start with How wonderful it is for brothers and sisters to dwell together. Heather and Jeremy are going to come forward and help sing. Page 128. 128. We are going to welcome in the Shabbos angels. And when I say to you, Shalom Aleichem, what do you say to me? Aleichem Shalom. Shalom Aleichem to those out in the cyberspace world. We're so wonderful, wonderfully blessed to have you with us. And everyone that's here, we had a fabulous buffet dinner. I guess for us, we are officially voyaging past COVID times into the land of, but everyone had on gloves and things. So it's wonderful to be here together and to celebrate Shabbat. Shalom Aleichem, page 142. Shalom Aleichem, Let us read the English under the prayer. Peace be to you, O ministering angels, messengers of the Most High, majesty of majesties, holy one of blessing. Enter in peace, O messengers of peace, angels of the Most High, majesty of majesties, holy one of blessing. Bless me with peace, us, O messengers of peace, angels of the Most High, 
majesty of majesties, holy one of blessing, depart in peace. O messengers of peace, angels of the Most High, majesty of majesties, holy one of blessing. And if you want part two of uh, Angels in the Talmud, uh, tune in with Mark Tannen on this coming Tuesday at 7, I believe it's at, and you will hear more straight from the word of the holy books. And so now, if you will read on the bottom of page 145, Entrances to holiness are everywhere. The possibility of ascent is all the time. Even at unlikely times and through unlikely places, there is no place on earth without the presence. And with L'Chad Dodi on the last verse, we turn around and embrace the Shabbos bride to come in those doors that we are opening for the welcoming of Shabbat. So if you will turn to page 138, even though we're going backwards, we are going to enter into a space of holiness with our Shabbos bride. Bahadari! <laughs> forward Pat Alexander to kindle the lights of Shabbat. Pat is our outgoing sisterhood president. She also extended her term just like our temple president Diana and got us through a very challenging time and so she's going to bring that light into our hearts and our beings for the Shabbos period. We have the two candlesticks representing partnership, two loving partners, Adonai and Am Yisrael. And the sisterhood, Pat represents everything that is good in the women in this community. I said, you represent everything that's good with the women in this community. She is a true Asha Kyle, a woman of valor. She is dedicated to things quite spiritual, esoteric, and definitely for the healing of those in need. So we're gonna focus on the light. And you can turn to page 120 if you need the blessing. And
with our air conditioning sometimes. Oh, no, you're going to need a new one. No, don't use that one. You're going to burn yourself. Oh, getting close to that flame. We may have some of those, like, artificial lighters underneath in here. So in case anyone tries to come get us, I can flash them with a lighter. Yeah. Note to our people, we need a new box. Hmm. Well, that, I don't think that's a spot. No, I wouldn't do it there. You want to try? I don't know that I would be much better. Let's see. One, I've got to just, well, I, have, I have to tell you, when this happens, I had one Yom Kippur, Kol Nidre. Oh, this happened to me, and it was so horrifying that I'm still scarred. And it was in the 90s. Come, let there be light. Let there be light. <laughs> it says we are meant to we are meant to create our own light. Look at that. Ooh, and I'm afraid of fire. Mm-hmm. Having been in the Malibu fire and the it? Dallas fire. Here, you want to try? I'll try. Oh, everyone's up here. Let's get all the women of sister up here to try to light these candles. Oh, it's going to take a man to do the job. No, he's got a lighter. He's got another (laughs) match. We are truly inclusive. See, it took a man to do it. Thank you for being in touch with your feminine side, Elias. (laughs) This may be one of the other things I have to have my husband cut out of the service. (laughs) People don't understand when they... We've had over 100 people watching some of our services, and I'm not sure whether this is good or bad. (laughs) So, Pat, um, would you please read this English right here? Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe, who hallows us with mitzvot, commanding us to kindle the light of Shabbat. And together, everybody, on the top of page 121. As As these these Shabbat Shabbat candles candles give give light to all all who behold behold them, so so may we, by our lives, give light to all who behold us. us. As their, As their brightness reminds us of the generation of Israel who have was kindled light, light so, so may we in our own day be among those who kindle light. light. So we're going to make the connection to the light. We're going to just look at it as we sing the candle blessing. So we'll make three circles, bringing that light into our being. Order out of the chaos. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melecha. Asher kedushanu b'mitzvotah, v'tzivanu lehad lipner, lehad lipner shel shabbat. Hug someone next to you, or give them a big woohoo. Those two out there in the universe, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom. And Pat, you have the microphone. So, um, part of sharing the light in this world is doing tikkun olam, which Pat is in charge. We have this uh, bin out here for you to bring food and sustenance for those in need, but also it's taking care of our physical vessel. And so Pat is gonna tell you about a program that you need to sign up for if you'd like to step over here. Um, if, you, if you would like to uh, speak with her further about this, it's important to take care of our bodies so that we can be emissaries of light in the world to Adonai. Some of you remember before the pandemic, we were doing um, balance classes in Torrance, but we haven't had any in a long time. And there's a new one that's coming out. It's not gonna be in Torrance, it's gonna be in San Pedro, and it's going to start after the high holidays. So what I'm gonna do is we're gonna send a flyer out and the, with information, and if you're interested, I recommend you sign up to be on the uh, list so that they can be in touch with you when the class actually starts, because they want to have enough people so we can actually hold it. And just so they don't know, tell them your qualifications. Oh, You're just not I've some been random. Teaching, oh, I've been, I've been working for the organization called Partners in Care for the last seven years. And um, I'm a retired RN. These are classes that are basically taught, lay, they're lay led most of the time. They're free for seniors. It's a program that's grant funded and it's just a wonderful program. There are a lot of other classes, but this particular one is one that I'm finding, we find a lot of people that need it. And I've had some of the people from the synagogue have asked me about it for the last six months, because there hasn't been anything one-on-one. So this one's coming up after the holidays, and I'll make sure that the information gets out through Judy, so that you guys, if you're interested, just follow up and contact them so that they know that you're interested. And then you can decide between now and September if you want to do it. 
Thank and I'll you. be one of the teachers. That's great. So now while you're standing up here, everyone please rise if you're able as the ark is open. And we're going to give Pat a special blessing for being the head of sisterhood. She stood by and watched how we've been like celebrating Diane all month long. I'm here. <laughs> so I know how seriously you take these scrolls of Torah and what it means to be a devoted Jew. Mother, famous individual of Temple of Mount that has led so much. Oh, if you start crying, I'm going to start crying. <laughs> we are so blessed to have you in this community. It's Thank interesting you. how you came to be with us, and we're just, you've really lifted us up with light, with blessing, and with the joy and the spirit that you contain in the vessel that God has given you. And when you retired, you went forth and said, you're going to help change the world, make it better. And you've done that. And you continue to do that. So we thank you. Thank you for being on the journey with all of us and being a very wonderful leader. Now that you aren't sister president and your immediate past president, you can go forth and do more. <laughs> okay. So put your arms around each other. We're going to do this twice tonight. And we're before, right before the, the we'll, we'll just do this so that our backsides aren't to the camera. May God bless you and keep you. May God's countenance shine upon you and be with you always. And may God be with you on your journey, granting you peace and strength and good health to continue to do your good works in the world. So in our Torah portion this Shabbat, there, it talks about the stranger and taking care of the stranger. And you do that. Your devotion to mental health, please be seated. Your devotion to those that are disenfranchised, those that are in need, those that are struggling. And your heart is as big and as vast as the sea and the ocean and the sky and the heavens. So thank you. Woo. All right. Yashar Koach, may you go forth and continue to be a blessing. Oh, she's taking her prayer book. See, she really does care. <laughs> oh, thank you. All right. Well, we are going to go forward now. Um, if you will turn in your books. We are going to do the Hatzikadosh, which separates our service from the warm-up of the Kabbalat Shabbat singing and our official call to worship, our Bar Hu. And so let us uh, actually read the English underneath the prayer so you know what we're talking about. And this also is contained within the Mourner's Kaddish. Uh, and as you can see, it's all a blessing going out to the divine. And this parsha in our Shabbat uh, Torah portion, Shalach, I'm giving you a little preview. Um, in a sense, we did not praise or bless God for the plan that God had, God had for us. And so we paid a very high price for that at the time. So we give praise out now, for we are truly grateful. Together on the bottom of page 144. Exalted and hallowed be God's great name in the world which God created according to plan. May God's majesty be revealed in the days of our lifetime and the life of all Yisrael, speedily, eminently, to which we say, Amen. Blessed be God's great name to all eternity. Blessed, praised, honored, exalted, and extolled, glorified, adored, and lauded be the name of the Holy Blessed One, beyond all earthly words and songs of blessing, praise, and comfort to which we say, Amen. The <laughs> Shemay <laughs> 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 
Those of you that are taking the Hebrew meditation class, pay attention to your letters. As you can see, we are starting with that big bet and our final chaf in the baruch. So it's important when we connect to the letter bet that we understand that the Torah was created not with the aleph, but with the bet. Not the aleph, which is the name self, the divine God, but with the bet. And the bet is number two in Hebrew, and the bet is a symbol for partnership, the partnership between two loving individuals and the partnership between God and us as the two candles, as we say. So when you breathe in and you take a look at the bet, you are actually connecting to partnership, to creation, but also to blessing. So every time we say, Baruch Adonai Elohim we are putting blessing, as we said, out into the universe. It, it reflects upon the divine, and then it blesses us. So when you connect to each one of these letters, you are manifesting the energy, which we know from our class. So when you look at the bet, every time you see a bet, know that if you gaze upon it, you're connecting to partnership, you're connecting to the source of all blessing, and, and so many other things. So, Baruch Adonai Elohim Elohim Asher bibaro ma'ari varavim, behochma poteach she'arim, uvibuna meshane itim, umachalif et hazmanim, umisader et hakochavim, bemish merotehem barakia kirtsono, bore yom belaila, golel or mit nechoshech, behoshech mit ne or, umavir yom umevihila. Mabdil ben Yahum ben Laila, Adonai Sabot Shemo, El Chai Vekayam, Tamigim Lokalein Ulela Ba'el, Baharachat Adonai, Hamari Barabim. And Heather's going to come up and sing Ahavad Olam on page 150. Everlasting love you offered your people Israel by teaching us Torah, mitzvot, laws, and precepts. Therefore, Adonai, our God, when we lie down and we rise up, we will meditate on your laws and your commandments. We will rejoice in your Torah forever. Okay, move me, 
They just love seeing you grow in your Judaism and music. As you can see, she is connecting with the divine gifts that God gave her, and she's exploring them and sharing them with us here at Temple Med, as is Jeremy. And if you would like to hear more, be sure to come to our Rabbi Cantor's first ever cabaret next Saturday night, June 24th. Yes. And so um, she will be singing some lovely musical pieces. Jeremy will be singing as well and providing some fantastic humor. Marianne, you would know he's so stoic up here, but I'm like, get us some of that. <laughs> Marianne will be playing violin, and we will be playing not only her ukulele, but her trumpet as well. Dan will be doing some amazing musical pieces, and Stacy is attending to loved ones who have passed on, which is very Judaic, and will have to be with us next year when we have the second annual one. So um, we're very grateful to have these fabulous musicians, and now you'll be able to hear them do something other than just Jewish music. And maybe, I know you guys wanted a Rabbi Tanter's Coffee House, maybe we'll look at that in November when we can actually have Baileys and coffee and hot cocoa and all that stuff. And then we'll have another cabaret in the spring or the summer. Maybe that can just be our mincha, our custom. So if you'll flip to page 152 and 53, this is our Shema. And once again, I encourage you, if you um, have not started the Hebrew meditation class, uh, Jeremy is very uh, voraciously and diligently recording our session, so you could catch up, but we're only halfway through the, the alphabet. We haven't gotten the Mem yet, or the Lama, we're going to go there. So you still have time um, to join in and make that connection. So I do think probably we should not do class next Thursday so that we can have a longer run through. Um, so then look for it in July. So that will give you some time if you want to access it, let us know, and you can uh, meditate with us. So if you would like to stand or be seated, whatever is more comfortable for the Shema with you. And what we're going to do is we're going to take a deep breath in. You can take it in through your nostrils, out through your mouth. If you've taken too much, you might hyperventilate. So just <laughs> take it enough. And if you can't do it from your nose and you want to do it from your mouth, something that we've discussed for us mouth breathers, um, you can go, 
You want to do it from your diaphragm. You want to breathe in, breathe it into your vessel, breathe it out. And it is that breath, that conscious flowing of breath that connects us to the divine inside of us. So a deep breath in and a deep breath out. And for those of you in the Hebrew class, if you notice, I'm trying to elongate some of the vowel sounds so that we can get our breath connected to the letters, connected to the prayer itself. So even if you don't know what every single word of the prayer means, you can make that connection with the breath and the letters. So let us read on the top of 155. Love your God with every heartbeat, with every breath, with every conscious act. Keep in mind the words I command you today. Teach them to your children. Talk about them at work, whether you are tired or you are rested. Let them guide the work of your hands. Keep them in the forefront of your vision. Do not leave them at the doorway of your house or outside your gate. They are reminders to do all my meets vote so that you can be holy for God. I am Adonai, your God. I led you out of Egypt to become your God. I am Adonai, your God. And now on the top of page 157. Together, standing on the party shores of history, we still believe what we were taught. Before ever we stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there is a better place and a promised land, and that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, that there is no way to get from here to there except by joining hands and marching together. Now, we're going to have the Michamocha on page 158. Both 
Jeremy, and Heather are going to come down here and help lead you dancing because Stacy likes to dance. Marianne gets up and dances. Sometimes Amy does. So they're your spiritual leaders, much like Miriam with the timbrel. Therefore, I'm going to give Heather the timbrel. And the women dancing with their timbrels followed Heather as she helped sing our song. So I expect those of you who are able to get up and dance. Shake your tushy, get it, get it in there, get all that, that spirituality flowing. Those of you who do not want to get up, I expect you to be doing a little of this, okay? So that you can get that spirit and that energy moving. Are we ready? Okay, Mijo Mopa! <laughs> And now one sixty Hashki Venu. Let there be love and understanding among us. Peace and friendship are shelter from life's storms. Adonai, help us to walk with good companions, to live with hope in our hearts and eternity in our thoughts, that we may lie down in peace and rise up, waiting to do your will. Rose, Hallelujah. 
and now Vishamru on page 162. How about Finkelstein? We're going to do the Finkelstein version because it's Diana's last Shabbat as president. So we're going to bring out all of it. Yep. for the Amidah on page 164 and the following pages. Adonai, Sephatai Kifta, 
Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Our Parsha, this Shabbat, I already told you earlier, was anyone paying attention? It is Shalach. And it is famous for the story of the 12 spies. There is also a section on Shabbat, how we treat the strangers, and actually the seat seat that we wear. Um, the seat seat are on the four corners of the garment of our prayer shawl. This represents the four corners of the world so that wherever we go, we know that God is with us. Uh, in some instances, you will find a blue thread and that is in what's in this parsha, which we'll have a little a moment of uh, discussion of that in the sermon, but um, those are sometimes difficult to find, but um, they are quite holy when they have the blue thread. And all of the knots add up on all four corners to the 613 commandments we have, not just 10. 613 commandments, thou shalt do something, thou shalt not do something. So all of this uh, is discussed uh, in part of this Parsha. But we're going to cover the spies. So as the big spy story goes, God promised a land that we were meant to grow and prosper in. When that actual land was before the Israelites, Moses then sent 12 spies to investigate and report back on things that they might have seen. What did the land look like? How was it populated? What was the population? What were the people like? How many were there actually there? Was it going to be possible to actually come in and conquer that land? And then what's the condition for farming and tilling the soil? How would it be for grazing for cattle? You know, what would this actually look like? But most importantly, Moses said, remain positive. He actually told them to go inside that land, take a look around, but remain positive. Well, quite the opposite happened. They were not positive. 
They were as far away from positive as you could get. They were the completely opposite extreme. They had so little faith in God and God's plan for us that they basically blasphemed God, slandered God and the entire mission, turning the entire group of Israelites against the plan, God's plan for us, told to Abraham. They got them all to get in an uproar and to not want it. Infusing fear in the inability to take the land and actually enjoy what had been promised and destined. Even though two people reported positively, Joshua and Caleb, all the other 10 spies were convinced that this was not the right plan, dissuaded everyone with their negativity, their fear, and creating a sense of mob psychology. Have you ever experienced anything like this or heard of anything like this or seen anything like this go on? Look at January 6th. I don't get into politics on BEMA, but groups can be persuaded to do things. And one person, may not even be the leader, can take charge and create a mob to have very passionate feelings about something. So this plan had been set out and these 10 individuals, number 10 equals God. Two, as we said with the bet, is partnership. 12, add them together, two and one, three. What do we say about the number three? Creates order out of the chaos. They were meant to go forward and create order out of the chaos, but they were so bad God had had enough. Enough is enough. He said, that's it. They're not getting in. None of them are getting in. And Moses was really upset. God wanted to wipe everybody out. And as was the pattern that Moshe had to deal with as time went on, he was constantly pleading with God on our behalf to please excuse our behavior. So what happened as a result is that none of the Israelites of that generation, except the two who stood up that interceded on God's behalf, all of them did not get in. That generation did not get into the promised land. Not until that generation was to die out. So my question to you is how often do you see something one particular way and yet others see it completely different? Has anybody experienced that? So take a car accident, all right? Two people can see the exact same thing, but they can see it in very different ways. And the way they saw it is very true for them. Or what about in life and in families and relationships? Do you ever have an experience with someone where you know what happened and you're, the other person has a completely different distorted reality of what happened? And you're like, no, that isn't what happened. Don't carry that with you. That's not how it went down. But they can't be shifted from that because that's their truth. That's what they experienced. That's what they saw. That's what they felt in their own being. So you can't shift them off of that. And so in a sense, if the 10 were afraid and scared and they came back with all that fear and negativity, they weren't going to be shifted. And they were so powerful in their negativity. The negativity, it, it it's, goes at the light like a moth to a flame. And that's what happened. Now, these two individuals, Josh and Caleb, they were spared because they dared to speak up and not go along with the group that wanted to discourage everyone from moving ahead. Now, have, think about, have you ever been in a position where you had to be the one that stood up and said, this isn't right? No. Or have you been in a position where you had to keep quiet because it wasn't the right time to speak? And that's kind of what happens with Joshua and Caleb. So Rabbi Eliyahu Safran says about this, Yehoshua could never, Joshua, tolerate falsehood, not even for a moment. He would immediately and forcefully oppose anyone uttering such things. Caleb, however, possessed a different kind of spirit. He could lay low. He could bide his time. Therefore, he understood that he had to gird himself against the negativity and the falsehoods, and that the way he would do this was with his own personal prayer. In so doing, 
She actually provides a vital model for our own times. Despite the various walls that we erect to protect ourselves and those that we love, from the influence of the outside, the spies, that presence, that negativity, that influence is always constant. We must turn to prayer to protect our inner selves from the lies and the filth that is swirling around us every day. Prayer and positivity keep us on the path forward. And once again, that was from Rabbi Eliyahu Safran. God guided us for so many years toward the land that we were about to enter. We had it right in front of us. But the spies' negative accounting was beyond the pale. So what happened? We wandered and wandered and wandered for 40 years. It didn't have to be that way. Rabbi Yitzhak Berkowitz notes that the spy story was actually merely a story of facts. The one question was how those facts would be interpreted. So something happened, there were the facts, 12 people saw it, 10 spies saw those facts in a very negative light. Now, you contrast this with tzitzit. And as I mentioned with the blue, the blue thread. In this Parsha, Rashi notes that from the very simple fact of that one blue thread, one could see the high heavens. So the Sisi in this Parsha remind us of God's presence in this world and the mitzvot, remember I said they're knotted up for the mitzvot, the mitzvot that we are meant to live by. So, I ask you, do we wish to strive for heaven or do we want to be bogged down with negativity and despair? Do we want to destroy any chance of happiness and good health and abundance and moving forward toward a future and a destiny that is meant to be ours? Jewish journalist Stephen Genek states, how we see facts determines our level of happiness and frames how our relationship with God will be. One must just know one fact. All that the merciful one does, he does for our benefit. With this axiomatic truth, one can actually live a life of nirvana. So when we're actually told to move ahead, go forth, lech lecha, we are meant to do this with faith that God's got us. God's got our back. God's the safety net. We just have to go forward. We have to have faith. We have to not succumb to the negativity that's around us and inside of us. Whatever lies ahead, we should approach it with open minds and positivity and know that God is always with us. The spies didn't do that. They were even told to be positive, but they were closed-minded, they were filled with fear, anxiety, and then chose to ruin it for everybody. There are people who will drag us down, no matter what. Do any of you know anybody like that? Has ever that ever happened to you? They will try to sway us toward their point of view. And in so doing, if we go into their point of view, their mindset, their psychology, their negativity, that can jeopardize not only our future, but everyone's future. Because we're all dependent on one another. We all affect each other like a domino. And this is exactly what happened. Those two were open-minded, Joshua and Caleb. They were open-minded, they were positive, so they got to go into the promised land. Because that is exactly what would be needed to embrace the beauty, the possibility, the abundance, but also to overcome the obstacles and, yes, any horrors that might occur. You have to be strong. You have to be positive. You have to know when to lay low and be quiet, and you have to know when to speak up and go forward. So in order to merit the pro promise that God wants for us, we need to have faith in the journey and God's plan the plan that God has for every single human being on this planet. We need to look for truth and met and remain open. Then the reward and the revelation will be ours to not only share with each other, but to pass on the door of a door from generation to generation. And that is what our world needs now. What the world needs now is love, sweet love. God is love. God is inside of us. 
We are, as the stranger is mentioned in this Parsha, we are meant to love our, another like ourselves. Do unto others as we would have done unto us. So we cannot succumb to the negativity and the monsters we fear. Our free will gives us the opportunity to color our world however we want to do it. We just have to rise above, trust in God, and push our way through to the light. As stated earlier, we just have to know one fact. All that the merciful one does, he or she, does for our benefit. And with this axiomatic truth, one can live a life of nirvana. King Hiratson, may this be God's will for all of us, God's plan for us, and may we remain open to what the future might bring. Shabbat shalom. So now we're going to do the Misha Berra on page 371. I do want to tell you that uh, the Pazels, I spoke with them today. Susan did have her heart surgery um, today, and they put multiple stints in, and um, she's done really well. You wouldn't know when you talk to her. She's, the two of them are amazing, very resilient, and so um, she's hoping to go home later today or tomorrow. It's unbelievable. Um, and so we want to send a real refuel shlema out to them and out to her. And then also, um, Abe Hebner is doing very well. He is trying to get in training. He was going to start today with his broken tailbone to get in and out of the car. He, he, did, he did do it, you saw. So he, so he uh, good for him, because you know what his motivation is? He wants to come to the cabaret. So that, that's devotion, right? So he's like, I said, maybe, he goes, I'm going to cut back on my painkillers. And I, I'm like, maybe you should just give it a couple of more days. You know, we've got a little time. Nope, nope, going to do it tomorrow. So you went, Elias went, saw him, found out. And so, and Marianne has offered to play violin. So she and I are going to go on Thursday and sing serenade. Uh, he and uh, Dorothea and anyone else that wants to show up, I guess. He loves to have company. And, um, you know, so we have so many people that are struggling, people in this room people out there in the cyberspace world, people in our community. Uh, and this prayer, I mean, it really has power. I mean, we have Judy Rice, she's been in the hospital and she thought she was gonna go to um, a graduation, a family member in, in Philadelphia, I think. And uh, she was a good stuff in the Riviera and the paramedics had to come and she just was in excruciating pain. She said she was felt like she was in labor. She could give birth to triplets. And it turned out that she has gallstones, but because of things that she has in her body for her heart and other things, they cannot do the gallbladder surgery or it will interfere. So she was in the hospital for a week. And, you know, so we have people in our community, you know, there everyone is, it becomes, and I've had this conversation multiple times this week, but it becomes a full-time job just to stay alive. But there's so much to live for. Yes. Wonderful, and thank you. And so she asked Sue Jones' son, Tim Jones, and he's another angel out there. He went and picked her up from the, holiday, from the hospital and brought her home. Thank you. Thank you to him. So please, you know, um, reach out to the people in the community that you know that might need some help. And there are others in this room that may, you know, have some fear and some anxiety about their own self and their journey and their mental health or their physical vessel. And, you know, be there for each other because we are a community that cares and loves one another. We are a family, and we do do it differently. And so at this time, see all your loved ones in your mind's eye that you want to send a rufu a shlamatu, a full and complete healing of body, spirit, mind. See their faces, say their names in your heart. As we sing the prayer on page 371, 371. Me share
to make our lives a blessing and let us say Amen. Bless those in need of healing with Rafuash Lema, the renewal of body, the renewal. And now, if you're able, please rise as we do the Elenu on page 586, and the ark is open. Bottom of 586. Elenu l'shaveach l'adon ha'kol, l'atek et l'ale yoseh b'reshit, Shelo asanu kegaye ha ratzot, velo samanu kemishpachot ha'adama, shelo sam chelkenu kahem, begor aleinu kechol hamonam, banachnu korim, kemishpacharim umodim, lefne melech malchei hamlachim, hakadosh baruchu, shehu note shamayim beyoset aretz, umoshe v'yekaro b'ashamayim imo'al, v'shechina tuzo, v'shechina tuzo, v'gov hei meromim, u'eloheinu heinod, emet malkeinu efesulato, kakalatu v'torato, The Melech of Kohaaretz, Bayom Hahu, Bayom Hahu, Ihe Adonai Echad, Ushmo, Ushmo, Ushmo Echad. Please be seated. Our thoughts at this time go to those who have moved on into the spiritual realm. If you'll turn to page 598, we have our mourner's Kaddish. Once again, if you look at the text, you'll see it's all in exaltation of the divine. And so if you've lost someone in the last seven days, would you please rise and say your loved one's name? Last seven days? If you're at home, please say names if you need to. If you have lost someone who's passed away in the last 30 days, the Shloshim period, would you rise and say your loved one's name? And if you've lost someone, someone who's passed away in the last 11 months, someone who's passed away, would you rise and say their name? Go ahead, Bob. Russian.
My husband, John Young. My mom, Ethel Rothstein. My aunt, Beverly. Bob Greenman and Sharon Dunwoody. Father, Tony Lewis. And if you're already standing, if you have the yard site, the anniversary of a loved one's death, raise your hand, or if you, uh, please stand if you have some to say. May their memory be for a blessing, and together, please rise as we say the Kaddish on 598. Once again, if you're at home, you don't have the text, or you just want to say amen, when I say the Gimaru, you say amen, you get the merit of having said the whole prayer. Yikadal, v'yikadash shemei rabah, be'almad yivarach yiruteh ve'amlich machuteh, v'chayechon v'yomechon v'chayyeh d'chobay Yisrael v'adala v'izman kari v'yimaru. Yehe shemei rabah mevarach le'alam alome amaya. Yit brach, yish tabach, yit pa'ar, yit roman, yit naseh, yit hadar, yit alev, yit halal, shemei d'kudasha, brechu. Le'ela minkol birchata v'shirata, tush v'chata v'nechemata, d'amiran be'alama v'inru. Yehe shalama rabah min shemei, v'chayim alenu ve'okol Yisrael v'inru. O se shalom b'imroma, fu ya se shalom. Alena ve'el kol Yisrael, b'imru. Amen. May God, who guides us on our path, sets forth our journey that is divined for us. Uh, watch over and shelter and protect as with the Shekhinah, our loved ones in the heavenly realm, those who are filled with grief and mourning at this time, and our entire world as together we say. Amen. Please be seated, and our president, Diana, is going to come up and do announcements. But we're going to face it with positivity, which you are so good at, facing things with positivity. It's true. Be emet. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. This is the last time. I don't get to do this anymore. If it's not good, tough. Shabbat shalom. Welcome to all of you here in our building and those at home watching on our YouTube. Live stream, thanks Mark Tannen. Our service and flowers are sponsored by Rambai. In honor of guess who? Hold on, hold on. In honor of you, Diana. In honor of Pat. Ah. Uh-huh. And then also my husband's birthday. Well, I can't compete with Mark's birthday. Well, I don't know. You, you play a good game. I like your style <laughs> and your ruach. Happy birthday, Mark. Thank you, Judy Fradkin, for arranging this wonderful dinner. We hope you all enjoyed it. Thank you to our very talented musicians, Dan Spector, our wonderful musical director, Marianne on violin, Amy on baritone uke, Stacy on percussion, Heather, our beautiful songstress. Heal quickly, Hilda, we need you back. Yes, we do. Don't forget Zan Zoom Music Class, Wednesday, June 21st. Yes. Mm -hmm. I knew I'd get it right once. You realize I've gotten it wrong four times? It's about time I learned. Okay, 21st, I'll be there. Roger's Zoom Meditation Class continues, Monday, 7. Mark Tannen's classes. Angels this Tuesday. Angels, oh, good one. Uh, your class? Uh, we're going to have a rehearsal, so two weeks, probably. Two weeks, okay. Lunch Bunch. We're meeting on Wednesday, June 21st at 
at the New Pan restaurant on Pacific Coast Highway between Hawthorne and Crenshaw. And let me know if you're going. Now, Saturday. That's the day they're going to actually celebrate the fact that I'm leaving. However, I'm not exactly leaving because I'm the immediate past president, which is in some ways harder than being president, but we won't go there. Ah. <laughs> okay. Ah, anyway, you don't want to miss that cabaret with all that fantastic music and delicious desserts and drinks. Mm -hmm. and We're music, music, time. music. Pina coladas. Yeah, I know. Sunday, June 25th is a day of Jewish food. Brent's Deli. No, 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 no. It's Wednesday the 28th. Oh. That's okay. I, I noticed one out. Everyone, please, and now in the cyberspace world, it is Wednesday the 28th. And please let me know if you're going to go because we're trying to figure out. We have decided possibly with the traffic that instead of going to Brent's for lunch, we will go to Brent's for dinner. So our, our appointment time at the Ronald Reagan Library, Presidential Library, is 2.15. We want to be there by 2.00. And then maybe after we'll go to Brent's to save on the traffic. But it depends on the group that's going. We must have consensus because we are a very diplomatic group. We are not like the spies or the Israelites. We will get along and make a group decision that's best for the majority. You got that? There's going to be a test. <laughs> OK. When in doubt, contact. Yeah, and let me know if you want lunch or, or dinner. OK. Now, how about Tuesday, June 27th, happy hour? Mm, at yes. 3 o'clock? Yes, and that's at, at, at the Rockefeller. Rockefeller Plaza. Plaza. There's Diana coming from New York, Plaza. Don't you love it? Um, in Riviera Village, Redondo Beach, let Marsha or Rabbi know if you're going. $2 specialty burgers. Okay, we have so much going on. And there's more things on the menu too. You can order from the regular menu, you could put the happy hour menu, but those two dollar burgers are full size, very delicious, and we eat, drink, and be merry. That's what we do. And if you're not gonna be merry, you can at least eat and drink. Okay. <laughs> Our next Shabbat service, Saturday, July 15 at 1030, and then Friday, July 21st at five o'clock. And today, I give my last announcements as president of Temple Ahmed. It has been such fun harassing you. Woohoo! Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. We love you. Mark Riker and Sandra Riker. Sandra, would you just come up right now? Um, we have a little something for you. Sandra has lovingly prepared in her usual style. Mark Reichert, if everyone, when you leave, um, either when you go over for the ONED or when you leave out the door, if you will look on the wall, um, on the Western wall, you will see all of our presidents listed and there's plaques there. So um, please, you will see. Diana, please come forward and you need to have a microphone so that people at home can hear you. So I don't screw up. Hi, Diana. <laughs> Hello. On behalf of our <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm not going to excuse you. Okay. Oh. On behalf of Can our congregation, it is my pleasure to present you with this gift to show our appreciation and love for all you have done the past, count them, 64 months to bring us to this day. We wish you a future filled with good health and many, many blessings. Thank you. I appreciate that. Amen. And here is our gift. It weighs a ton. What could be so heavy? Let's congratulate her. We'll sing Simon Tova Mazel Tov for her accomplishment, surviving. Yes, Simon Tova Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov, Simon Tov, Simon Tov, 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 Mazel Tov, Mazel Tov, Simon Tov.
Only Sandra yep, she knows to, how to do, do this. <laughs> it's a big one, Sandra. Wow, this is, it says, for all you've done, Diana, before and during your Temple Met presidency, especially those 64 months from February 20, 2018, through June 2023, please know you are very much appreciated. Woohoo! Oh, wow, look oh, at all that. This is the most exceptional gift I have ever received. Aww. It's unbelievable. Here, let's, let's kind of show people so you can see. Here's our quilts that you can see. And this is, you know, here's all of the, you know, you can see some of these pictures in our uh, hallways. But look, page after page after page of all the things, can you see, that we've done. Oh, here's some Chachara with the Torah around. And, you know, it just goes on and on and on and on. This is a very big book. Oh, wow, look at that. Ooh, now you know why we're all here together. Why do you pay me? <laughs> that is a heavy book. <laughs> Thank you for leading us through a very challenging and difficult time. I Thank you, both of you. Mm -hmm. I didn't plan to have COVID. No. no. But I have to tell you, my board was yes. exceptional. I thank my board of trustees yes. from the bottom of my heart. They supported me. They didn't fight with me much. <laughs> Only a little bit. I always won, though. Yeah. yeah. Well, you are I'm, a Virgo, right? I'm a Virgo. Mm -hmm. And I played the president's card. You know what that is? You either do what I want me want you to do, or I quit. <laughs> it's like Wendy's like, of course, I was the first president. No. <laughs> I'm a Virgo. Yes, she is. <laughs> That's it. Like your rabbi knows everybody's signs. Wait, okay, so thank you, Mark and Saunders. So thank look, you so if much. If everyone would please rise, the ark is open. Diana, let's bless you in front of the ark. Maybe she said it to me a couple times, what? that you'd quit. <laughs> Don't make me crazy! <laughs> no. Okay, stand over here. No, she doesn't. She, she, okay, you stand in front of these Taurus girls. Okay, turn sideways so that the cyberspace world can see. Okay, there you go. Just like I said to Pat, I know what these mean to you. Everyone in this community cares about this Torah. And you were our fearless leader in times of great darkness, despair, fear, anxiety, and negativity. And not once did you let it stop, you or us. When hard decisions had to be made, sometimes not popular ones, a lot of people have been wanting a buffet for a very long time, or when people had to be kept out or whatever. And when the decision was made that we, these musicians and I, would still keep going. We kept going all through COVID doing these services because that mattered to you. The Torah mattered to you. I had rabbis out in the world in Canada saying, what are you doing? Why are you leaving your house? Why are you doing that? We're not doing that. Why are you doing that? Because we do things differently at Temple and that. And you stood by that. You have an extraordinary heart, great ruach, and a strength that you can actually draw upon now if you allow yourself to. And you had a beloved husband every step of the way, and a great family, wonderful children, fabulous grandson. And you gave everything that you could give and more. And you will continue to do that. Because Notice how she said that. I will continue to give, just in case I might have forgotten. Or said you'd quit, as we stand in front of the tourist girls. Because that's who you are, and that's what you do. And so we're going to have to talk about something else, because we talk so much day and night and late mornings and late nights and many texts and we love you. Marianne, get ready. It's quite a relationship. <laughs> Don't turn your back on the tour. Okay. I have to tell you just one, one thing. So I have two phones, a landline, which is not working right now, which will work maybe tomorrow, and my cell phone. And then there was the day when Mark called me on my cell phone. And Dee called me on my landline, and I'm talking like this. And then I said, here, you two talk to each other, I'll be right back. 
And then we discovered the wonder of three-way calling, so that sort of happens, yeah. Yeah, no, or, or, or the times when I call you on a landline and you don't answer, so then I track you down on your cell phone and you're in the bathroom or parts unknown, and then vice versa, the other way around. Oh, I'm in the market. Oh, I'm having my hair done. But there's something really important you have to decide because she makes good decisions. You follow your heart. You follow the connection that you have to divinity inside of you. And I don't, I don't know that we would be here flourishing as we are if you hadn't been at the helm at this time. And as I said to Marianne, every single president has a mission, a unique quality and gift. Future presidents, listen to what I'm saying. Future board members, everybody. We all have something to share. And we come into this place of leadership with the gift that is needed for that moment. Wendy is very orderly, bylaws, starting the synagogue. Even though the synagogue was founded and discussed in Mark and Saunders' home, like Moshe, Mark had the humility to let Wendy be the first president. Because <laughs> Wendy loves order and things by the book, literally. And now you create books and you pass them on. And Mark is all about building. And he was the president when we built the synagogue and was on you know, de dealing with everything. He was our second president. And then we had a third one for a brief moment. And then, <laughs> and then we had Terry who tried to pick up the pieces from the third one and keep us going forward until you picked up the pieces when Terry wasn't well. And that's what we do. We pick up the pieces, we remain positive, and we keep going forward, Kadima. Just like in the Michamocha, we keep going forward. And now Marianne will come along with music. And as you can see, our music is manifesting and growing. So everyone brings something. Who knows what the journey will hold? Each and every one of you presidents, you made this happen. Each and every one of the volunteers on the board, sisterhood, sisterhood volunteers, brotherhood. I want those men to come back and barbecue again. We have a barbecue. Everyone makes it happen as a community together. All of our congregants, both those who are here, those in the cyberspace world, those who show up at High Holy Days, everyone makes this happen. Why? For a met, for truth and justice and devotion to God, to Adonai. So thank you. You're welcome. I've had a lot of help. May you be blessed as you go forth on your journey. And everyone, let's say, Amen! Amen. Woohoo! All right. So, we're all going to put our arms around each other. Jeremy and Heather, you can come in here. We're going to sing. We're going to do the beer cocoa honey one last time for Diana and give her some strength. Isn't this fabulous? I know. I mean, she gave you a mega book. You know, nobody has a book this big, and she's made a lot of books. <laughs> and you deserve it, every page. So we call upon Adonai to be gracious and merciful and kind to us and to know that we understand and appreciate the journey that we are on together, that we do connect to truth, that we do try our best to go forward with positivity and light, not to succumb to the negativity, that we do believe in the gifts and the mitzvot and all that Torah is. And each one of us has Torah inside of us our own story. And we bless you for sharing yours with us. <laughs> Can you hear us on maybe God's will? And anyone with a June birthday, Mark, I know you don't want to come out here. Come on up. And anybody with a June wedding, come on up. Come on up. We just want to sing. Or wait, here, shake your hands. Wave your hands. Come on up. Come on up. Yom who let it sameya, Yom who let it sameya, Yom who let it sameya, Yom who let it sameya. Do we have any June weddings? June weddings, June anniversaries. Okay. So we have Joy and we have Robin coming forward. Joy is a true, come on up, come on up here, example of joy and fastidiousness. fastidiousness. Come forward. Joy and Bob, we love all the cards that you make and send. You are really amazing. You, and you, Robin as well, stalwart volunteer as well. What we have here is a trio making order out of the chaos in the world. 
beautiful women. All, each and every one of you is an Asha Hila woman of valor. May you have strength and good health and go forward with life and light as we all bless you. And may this birthday be just the beginning of decades more. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! And for that, we're gonna say yes, amen. Okay, let's sing Osa Shalom. And we're gonna go over for Kiddush and Mosi. Kiddush and Mosi. Are we ready? Mark Cannon, please come out. Okay, Osa Shalom. One, two, three. Oh, uh, say shalom, be romant. Oh, uh, yeah, say shalom, aleinu. Say oh, Israel. Say ro, be ro, amen. Yeah, say shalom, woohoo. Yeah, say shalom, woohoo. Shalom, aleinu. Say oh, God, Israel. Yeah, say shalom, woohoo. Yeah, say shalom, woohoo. Hilda, be well. Come back to us. Play the harp for us. Yashikoak, everybody. Thank you.